there's a goodness of God that gets you so lost that you can't even consider the person seated next to you. It exists. Somebody shout hallelujah. And those pleasures are important. You know, with my people, I've actually shared into the spaces where we even go deeper than the pleasures and we're awakened to the higher realm of the love of God. And that realm that invites us into the commitment of things even when the feeling is not present. So you hear Paul saying things like, war unto me if I preach not the gospel. You hear Paul making statements like, necessity is laid upon me to preach the gospel. He is ready to preach the gospel in and out of season. So that's a man who has transcended beyond the, the pleasure level and realm, which is also important because it keeps you, you know, energized. It, it stirs you. But you see, when, if, you, if you stay in the pleasure realm, it only means there are days you won't feel like praying. There are days, and, and, and it makes me laugh when people say, you know, Apostle, pray for me. These days I feel dry. <laughs> Let me make you understand this. When Jesus is talking to the woman on the well, he says, the water you give, if you drink it, you can become thirsty again. The water I give, if a man takes it, he can never thirst again. He can never hunger. So how can you be dry when you're watered? <laughs> Identity. Identity. It's a consciousness. It's a conscious issue. It's not awakened to the life of Christ. It's not aligned to higher laws. If you have understood this point, you'll never be dry again. God, feel me. I'm dry. I'm thirsty. I'm dry. How can you be dry? You cannot be dry. He says, out of you shall flow tampecos. No, out of you shall flow tankers. Out of you shall flow bensons. No, he says, out of you shall flow rivers of living water. That means you are a source, not a recipient. Somebody shout amen. You are a source, not a recipient. You're a source. So even if you feel, the only reason why you are stuck in your worship because you're still in that place where you don't feel like, and I've had preachers even tell people, you know, if you don't feel like praying, sometimes it's okay. God loves you. Yeah, it's true. But why don't you feel like praying? So somebody shout hallelujah. What, what are you dealing with that can refuse you to come in contact with the sweetest thing that has ever existed? How can you lose appetite for the most beautiful thing in the world except you have not tested the real thing? Somebody shout hallelujah. And so, I'm emphasizing that we even go beyond the pleasures and get into the higher laws of understanding the love of God. He calls it that love which passes, uh, 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 the, the, the love which passes what? Uh, mere knowledge without experience. The Amplified says it. You know, people say, Jesus, Jesus loves me? Why? For the Bible. Okay, but have you experienced that love? No, but the Bible says, if the Bible says it, it is true. Yeah, but have you experienced that love? No, but the Bible says it, and if God says he loves me, I can't doubt. Yeah, but have you experienced Experience that love. Somebody shout hallelujah. So there is a place for experience. But you see, there's an experience beyond pleasure. Hallelujah. And that is why when Paul gets into that experience, he says to the mature, to them which are perfect in knowledge. He says, we do impart these things because it's a place of impartation. And he talks about that wisdom which is of God. He talks about the wisdom which is not of this world that is brought to nothing or naught. Okay? But he talks about the wisdom of God which is revealed in the mystery of the person of Jesus Christ. And, 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 and when Paul gets into that place where wisdom starts to become sweet, <laughs> The revelation of Christ is more beautiful than any feeling you can have in the presence of God. Then you are there because he's inviting you in a place of responsibility for the pleasure he has given you. And if you should have that responsibility, then it's expedient that some wisdom is shed on your spirit because you are in the presence. I'm talking about for who pray so much, but they don't too little. You find, but you pray so much. How can you be so funny when you pray? 
you understand what I'm saying? Do you know people like that? This guy can pray. He's not a guy on our server. You understand? There's some intercessors we even had to counsel in some churches. They're the ones who sleep in church, but they know who is the thief, who is the devil worshiper. They're the ones who knows who's the thief in the spirit. They're the one who knows who is going to steal. They're the ones who sense it. You understand? They're the ones who know who is not your husband, yet themselves they fail to keep marriages. They're the ones who knows who, who, who is who has fallen, yet they are more fallen than the fallen. Kwegamba, physician, heal yourself. Bengyo <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. The ones I'm talking about didn't come, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Tell your neighbor, pray with results. So, we're talking about a place that takes you beyond what the presence of God can give you for feeling. And then God tells you, I actually, I lured you with loving kindness and mercy. But I didn't want you to end there. I wanted to reveal myself to you. Now let's talk. This is the way of the Spirit. This is how the principles of the Spirit work. This is the integrity of a man of God. This is how I speak. This is the difference between the first dimension of the spirit and the second. This is what the east wind represents. This is what the south wind represents. This is what the northern wind represents. This is how the eastern wind represents. This is how I spoke to Elijah. This is the difference between how I spoke to any prophet and how I spoke with Moses. For when I speak with prophets, I speak to them in parables. And he didn't say, I mean to people, in dreams and visions. He says, but that is not how I speak to my servant Moses. He says, for he beholds the very similitude of God. I do not speak to him in hidden sentences. 